Hello guys, welcome to Prime Tech Automotive YouTube channel. So I have here Toyota 1KD engine on a 150 series Land Cruiser. I'm going to perform timing belt, tensioners and water pump, whole water pump, like the complete water pump assembly replacement. So here are some tips. Wait until the end of the videos. So here I need to remove the timing cover to access the timing cover so I need to remove the dry belt a um, couple of police at the front and also a radiator fan and the fan shroud so so first I'm removing the coolant expansion tank there are two 10 mil bolts to undo So I forgot to mention guys, so before um, I do everything, so the, the, the very important part is just disconnect the negative battery terminal as a failsafe. So just in case if someone comes and um, try to start your car when the timing belt is off on timing belt is removed, so you end up with damage in it. So first step, remove the battery wire. So once I, um, then what I did was I drained the coolant and as you saw i had the access to remove the fan um, after i removing the expansion tank and now i'm just removing a couple of bolts which the fan cowling and, and as of people call fan shroud and what you can do you can pull the fan shroud and the fan together and that way you don't need to remove the radiator or anything so you have plenty of space um, to remove the components in the timing area so as you can see there is plenty of space so now I'm just um, lose the tension on the dry belt tensioner and removing the dry belt so if you don't remember the the dry belt diagram I would advise just um, draw a picture um, how the diagram how the dry belt um, the routing is on a paper so then you don't forget So I'm just removing the timing cover now. So once removing the timing cover, you have access to the, uh, the timing belt area. So the next important step is before you remove the timing belt turn the engine and align the timing marks so on this engine it's pretty easy so you have only to align the camshaft and the injector pump down there so as you can see the notch there that's the injector pump timing just below the crank angle sensor and as um, then you can make sure that's the TDC mark on the crank pulley and also as I previously shows the, um, showed the camshaft um, TDC mark so and I just give it a bit of clean So I'm just removing the hydraulic tensioner by undoing two 10 mil bolts.
So once you remove the hydraulic tensioner, then you can remove the timing belt. So as you can see on the video, so um, now I'm going to remove some other components which is in front of the water pumps because uh, I am removing and replacing the whole water, complete water pump assembly including the back housing. So I'm using Toyota genuine parts on this car. So I'm just, um, so to access to the back housing like the complete water pump assembly, I need to remove the AC compressor, alternator and the dry belt tensioner bracket. So then you can access to two 12 mil bolts, um, which I'm going to show you shortly. So in this stage now I'm just removing the camshaft pulley, which is called cam sprocket. And just guys, one more uh, step so that crank sorry the cam key do not lose it so you need to keep it somewhere on a safe place so So now I'm, I'm removing the back timing cover because there are some bolts which belongs to the water pump behind this plastic cover. To access to the AC compressor alternator in the area, I need to remove the air box, as you can see on this video. When you work on this area, just be careful on the, all these um, 
uh, connectors wiring not to damage them and also especially the uh, AC lines so there are four bolts four 12 mil bolts need to remove to remove the AC compressor then you need to remove the alternator because there are a couple of bolts behind the alternator which is on that big bracket up there Now I'm just um, removing this tensioner bracket. Once you remove the bracket, so you have access to the actual water pump. So once you remove the water pump, you can remove the, the water pump gasket. So the genuine gasket was a metal gasket. So if your car have a metal gasket, your life is easy. So you don't need to remove too much cleaning. But if you have a cardboard gasket or something, it's very hard to clean. But make sure there are no pieces left on the block surface before you install in the new water pump. So I'm going to give you a, give a good cleaning on the um, block surface where the water pump fitted and then I am going to install the new water pump on the next step. Now I'm just installing the new water pump, align the gasket properly.
I'm not going to go through all the steps. So as you remove all the all the components, you need to put back together according to the like the procedure how you remote. So once you install the border pump, then the next step to install the the tensioner bracket, which is um, alternator and the AC compressor fitted. So I have fitted the alternator and also now I'm just installing the AC compressor. Once you complete those steps, I'm just going to install new timing belt and the, the tensioners. So as I mentioned before, these components that purchased from Nearest Toyota dealer here. So all the parts use this engine is Toyota genuine parts. Here on the cam sprocket, uh, the torque spec was 98 Newton meter. So once you tighten the cam sprocket, make sure before you install the new timing bell, make sure the, the timing marks are okay. Um, doing several checker, checkings, no harm. So on this belt, there are two marks. As you can see that align to the timing marks on the engine. So, as I mentioned, so I'm, I'm just installing the timing belt. So just aligning the injector pump mark and also the cam sprocket mark. That way is very easy. You, you will um, not lose in the, the timing. Just confirming the timing marks are okay. <coughs> and that's the um, the idler tensioner and I have installed the hydraulic tensioner and the torque specs on this is um, 13 Newton meter in those two bolts that was 38 Newton meter the Allen key and once you install these things and you can uh, pull the tensioner pin out and just showing the applying correct torque into those components. I use the cam holder to hold the camshaft. Just using the camshaft sprocket holder to torque the cam sprocket bolt to 98 newton meter it's a 19 mil head ball yeah so pretty much everything done so i'm just confirming everything okay before i put the cover back together um and one more step so once you put those things back in just turn the engine for two rounds making sure timing marks okay again and so I have done all those steps so all the parts back together so now I'm just going to fill engine cooler timing belt warning light reset So here, as you can see now, uh, when the timing belt is due on these cars, there are T-belt light, as you can see, stays on once you start the car. So you need to reset it. This is the procedure. So use the auto trip button and use the trip B counter and turn off the ignition. 
and while you hold in the trip button turn the ignition on to not start the car and then you will see the t-belt light blinking and keep holding for three to four four seconds maybe five seconds and then let the button go and give it a quick press then you will see the 15 numbers there and then you press the trip button for 15 times and then on the 15 times on the 15 count press and hold the auto trip button and then you will see the t-belt light blinking again and will disappear so the that's how you reset the timing belt warning light on this and then turn off the ignition and turn the ignition back and start the car so that's it guys so that's how the job done is it's not very hard to do this um, timing belt and water pump on this. Thanks for watching. Check into my channel, guys. There are some other videos.